Hello everybody, welcome to Bass and Bonsai. Not a topwater edition, but this is where we catch largemouth bass and I show you how to have fun catching largemouth bass. So buckle up and hang on, it's gonna be a good one. But that reel just goes perfect with that uh, oh, it does. It does. DMX. So anyway, halfway point, buckle up and hang on, we're gonna start catching some fish now. Let's do it. We're gonna stick with what works for now. I've witnessed crawdad spit up twice that matches this color perfectly. That worm is finally starting to get abused to the point where it's showing a little sign of wear. I got one. I did not get a great hook set. But I have to give it to this rod. It flat does work. Puts them in the boat. And this bait flat works here for sure. Got him. Oh. Now he like slack line me and I just reeled up and felt him and then popped him. Whee! Game on, Charles, with this bait. Many just put it on another rod so I can double check my hook. As soon as it hit the water. I may need to double check my drag. Might go one click more. Oh, he spit up some stuff too. Oh wait, let's check the color. This is different. Nope, still has the orange. See it on the head? Oh, that's gross. Look, Jay. There you go, Jay. Yeah, Charles, there's a perfect, look at all the colors. Oh yeah. So this is one thing you guys can double check to make sure you're on the right path, but there's like orange tips, green. We've definitely, I think, got the best I don't think you could get a better color than what we got going right now for today. And now we have a little cloud cover. Technically that gold blade should be working even better. And I'm not, whoa, get up, got a bug in my face. I'm, I'm not really, I'm changing up. When I change that speed, it definitely jumps around may not even matter today but I always like to that's one thing I found that in my I guess I'll call it my chatterbait adventures with the testing the jackhammer against the original and all this and that I used to just put a basically a crawdad like the and I think that's why the Re reaction innovations uh, smally beaver works so good because it does look like a crawdad but it's all flat there's no once you add appendages you'll still get them that way but to really let that bait move around you almost need just something back there that's not creating any thing on its own it's almost just back there just like those little trailers we used to use back in the day i still have one here somewhere matt gave me like on the spinner baits no the uh little just two little whatchamacallit it's this thing right here i should try this yeah, like back in the day, you used to actually when you bought a spinner bait, they came with these. A lot of them uh, was it man? I forget who's the first one that really started putting those out, but and that's what this. Uh, I'll try to show you guys. Probably can't see, but when you when you do that, and you don't want to do the whole cast that way, you kind of want to slow it. And then you just vary it up. Will help a few extra bites. Today, I don't think it matters. I think you're going to get hit no matter how you're throwing it. But as far as more hits, and hopefully we can convince a big one into it. So let's switch colors. So we're going with this one again which was working and then i'm gonna go to that purple 
too slow. I've got grass. So let's just go to a different color because that purple is calling my name. Well, you were just talking about how great purple was. That sun is biting my legs. Well, as that sun stays out longer and longer, I think this color... Got him. That took, oh, he came up. No, wait, I got him. He changed direct, he did something that made it, for a second I felt like I didn't have him. He may have been running hard at me. Split second, that fish felt like he was gone. And then he was right back. Wee! I think this was a new bait when I started. One of these was new, one wasn't, but you can see where the blades, the blade is hitting. That's, it's gonna wear that head off, bouncing it off stuff and all that. But you glue that skirt, you glue that thread that's holding the skirt material on, it'll stay on for a long time. Hook is still sharp, catching plenty of fish. Ooh, that wind, we're into the wind again. Feels good now. Okay, this white is definitely not as good as the other two colors I got. So we're gonna keep going down that rabbit hole, trying different colors. That color is just not as good today. I should try that crazy bright one, but I'm not going to. I'm gonna try, now I've still even got a jackhammer in reserve. That's a half ounce jackhammer with a little bit bigger trailer. I might pull him out if I'm looking for a bigger fish. Who knows but for now we're gonna go with this dude i've not tried this color yet today charles said he tried something similar yeah i, I wouldn't even want to count like i lost count you guys know i can't count that high right yeah like more than you can count i'm a redneck more than i can count That dude was on the outside. Wee! Well, that color works. Charles got one. That's a nice chunk. Sticking with that orange. Whoa! Yep. Got him. Switched up rod and reels though. I got I got up there. I gave that one a little time. I, I never did really reel up all the way under the weight. I just felt something different than slack and then set to that. Had him hooked good though. Alright, this color seems to be working. This rod and reel seems to be working. Green sunfish. They're almost all the same size. You know, you should be keeping these, Charles. You should be keeping these to eat. Charles is thinking tasty. Charles got one. One of us is getting ready to hook into a big fish. One of us is getting ready. I'm going back to that color because I think it's going to be me. Charles has one. I'm getting ready to catch a giant. Oh, I thought I had one. Okay. Yeah. I'm a little better. You got another one? Yeah. Buzz bait well, that mm -hmm. day. Boy, was it about five, wasn't it? Yeah. But other than those two times, now you said you went that one morning before me to that lower one. And I caught. But other than those two pounds. big fish I've caught out of there, the only other big fish I've seen was a three pounder like one time. Another one that quick? Fire. That quick. I got one too though. I 
I think. Yeah, I got one. We got a double. Mine's little. Charles is getting one about every cast though with that one of his. Whee! They probably threw right by that wood, didn't you? Under that tree. Take my chunk of wood. He pops up on my, I've watched one video and then he pops up all the time, you know, on my side. Alright. you feel that? Uh, yeah. Sorry. One grabbed it right at the boat, it went right yeah. by your head. I about took Matt's head off last week. Yeah? If it wasn't been for me yanking back and him, you know, leaning back, uh -huh. like it just missed his head. There's one. Well, I guess you guys witnessed it too. As many fish as I've hooked and caught, how well it'll cast. This is definitely a chatterbait rod. Does the job. You said big A's, and that just made me think. Not big bass. I got it. Fish that fast. It definitely seems to be good for hookups. I'll give it that much. Watch me start missing them now, but I don't miss a ton on this rod. And I'm fishing exactly like I normally would. 15 pound braid to a 15 pound P-line original leader. These smaller chatterbaits, littler hooks. I, for the life of me, can't figure out. I lost those two in a row, and I was thinking, man, this rod's going to suck. But that was early on, and it hasn't happened since. I mean, you're going to get... Nobody's got a 100% hookup ratio on any bait. I don't care what they say. I think this rod may have it. That little it factor for ensuring... Sensitive enough. Got good feel, but just enough give to kind of give you that sensation of, you know, not a solid. I think we've got too much grass. But those other rods, once I'm used to them, I mean, I feel. I think it's all about the initial hookup. You got to pull, yank. And then basically not horse fish in. You know, let the rod do the fighting. Yeah, I think it gets too grassy. Oh, that's right. Right there. And got him in. It's a little weird, but we got him in. You can see how this grass now you can make out it's real shallow right here, Charles. Let's try green. Uh oh. I still got that fish. I yanked, heard the drag, it got light. I just yanked him all the way closer to me, I think. Whee! All right, we made it to the top again. Look what I did, I switched up on you. It's gonna be the final little chapter in our chatterbait deal. Our best bait that's worked 
and I wanted to try out something was feeling different about these rod and reel combos so I just switched the reels around on the rods to see if that's possibly part of it I'll tell you right now the uh, I don't know if if it at what point I would you know just basically stop using the carbon light reel on this but I definitely like the zillion better on here let's swap though let's go to the switch so here's what I ended up with carbon light on the fate You know, I think I actually like that carbon light. We're drifting over. I don't know if you guys can make out that grass. That's what is all in this place. You can't see it very often here and there, but it's almost, except for there's a big, a uh, little bit deeper section out here, but all up in that shallows were just on top of it everywhere. Uh -oh. I think I messed this mojo up. Put the combos back where they belong. <coughs> that feels like a fish that was swimming at me there for a while. So yeah, this there's something to be said about the hookup ratio with this rod. Charles is on them. Little bitty BFS fishing now. We've we've adapted. I'm still throwing this stuff. I haven't given up on chatterbait, but it's about time. But I have to give it to the old Johnny Morris as I stand up. I think it's it's a pretty good rod. I think I just got to get used to the way this reel fits on this reel seat compared to and how it casts compared to a zillion, but. Get off their grass. There's no doubt you can just go out and get the job done fishing with chatterbaits. Just as well as you can with any of that higher end stuff, as well as you could with what they tell you you need that seven foot four crankbait rod, 20 pound fluorocarbon, and all that yeah, yeah, yeah stuff. And you got to have the jackhammer because of the gamagatsu hook and all that. Yeah, you sound like a salesman. That's a lot of marketing. Yeah, I know. And you don't need all that. <laughs> all you need is a good, what I consider, this is considered medium heavy, but I think it's, what's funny is I think it's got a little bit softer tip than the rest of mine that are uh, the ones, they're both mediums, or they say they're mediums. But one is just a cheaper 13 fishing brand and the other one is a cheap, you know, well, I say cheap, but kind of expensive for Al AliExpress, but AliExpress brand. And I think they just have that good makeup to where they're not just like this rod. I wouldn't call this rod medium heavy extra fast that, like they do. Feels good. Problem is the bite feels not good right at the moment. Yeah, I think. Which is actually good. We seem to have come here and caught the most of the bass that wanted to bite before we got ran out by the heat. Now you've probably seen every time I throw directly into the wind with this reel, it it's 
been an issue, but I think I'm going to fix that here real quick. And I think I can fix it by turning the brakes up to four. I've been stuck on three, three and a half. I don't want to turn the internal deal. I felt I did good once I moved it. It's just one on. I could, and honestly, I could probably just shut that thing down. I wonder if I should try that, Charles. Let's let's do that. Buckle up and hang on. We're gonna shut off. If I can get yeah, we're just gonna do with magnetic braking. We're not gonna do any fancy. I don't want nothing. Well, see, the thing I'm is, just gonna try. Internal, that's just for your startup. That's for my right. What? We're gonna try. If you're casting light. You need to turn off all that. You just bob it. Well, I just wanted to see what I feel now. So now I have no uh, mechanical braking, centrifugal force type mechanical. I turned the mags up to five. I probably should be testing in the wind. And it's probably gonna backlash. Let's try in the wind. Yep, it kind of well, fluffed, but didn't, but. So that's the thing, I definitely can't. So let's try something else. So I had to go to five and I really have, yeah, like it will backlash. So I don't want to have to go way up on the magnets. So let's go the other way. Just kind of testing. I got line going all over by Charles now. Look out, Charles. The wind happened to be blowing shits all over his neck. Look out. All right. There's that stick again. Let me go... I'm going to turn the magnets back down, but for now, I'm going to go with what I think I liked. Was we're going to go two on, not just one. And then we're going to turn down the brakes as low as we can. So, first of all, let's see if that helped with backlashing or not. Okay, so we did not get a backlash in the wind. Now we're going to go down to four. Two clicks. Because we didn't get a lot of distance. With two of those on and number five, you definitely... Okay, so four, no backlashing. We'll go to three. And I think that's where I started out. Because I had three internals and three outside. And I could tell that was way restricted. So I went with two. In three and I was casting fine no backlashing but I felt like I was still not getting the distance I needed okay so no no sign of backlashing at three let's take it down to two I know we should only go half but we're going two. so we got two internals and then I'll turn and see how far like with the wind if it feels freed up enough to work I'm trying to find a one set it and forget it setting okay so still no backlash let's go to freaking one what is that all right we're wait well one but I think one's like three clicks away from nothing and each time we're getting further out I got a real faster and Charles is fishing behind me. He's still like right close enough to the bank to get in the shade. All right, here we go. It'll probably backlash. Yep. Okay, so I'm just going to go a click at a time. Got a backlash there. That was definitely, you got to have some kind of magnetic stuff helping you out in the wind. Let's try this. Just barely. So... Well, we were at two earlier. It'll probably be here. I think it's at two. 
or almost maybe it's one down from two right now but basically two internal deals and number two on the mags on the carbon light with braid anyway filled about all the way up into the wind we still backlashed so let's go now we're dead on two i'm pretty sure i already made that cast and it didn't backlash so we're going to try it and that could be just for me the bait i got and all that kind of stuff i got fouled up somehow all right okay that's it did you get that charles sure right at two and then there's two one straight across from each other and that seems to not let you backlash throwing this half ounce chatterbait anyway well close to half ounce it's three eighths with a skirt thing so and that's a pretty strong wind what would you say that is 15 mile an hour it's over 10. Yeah, probably 15. So now, let's see if we feel it's restricting our cast. Yeah, maybe just slightly. I can tell it's... But we're still getting out there pretty good. So that's probably about as good as it's going to get. Now, I could readjust it. I could put just one on in there and then try to find the... But I kind of like two. I like it even. One on each side. I'm kind of that person. So let's just see what we got with our little... It's still pretty pretty close to freed up. And that is, I've already got this adjusted from the house with like a... You know, just... A, it's not... Side to side and just a like the slightest amount of tension put on that spool to kind of keep it from just unspooling I don't like to go free willy or commando so quick little on the water test and adjusting feels good though I think I need more grease I put a little bit on it well what are you thinking Charles where which where which way? This place is pretty much toast. You could force the issue and pick up a few here and there, maybe. I don't know how many more times I can go up and drift down, and I was going to say we could go up drift worms down, but I don't know. Right. on it high road to China or Japan well that's what Olivia asked. she's like how late you think it she's watching we were watching the news the weather how late you think you're gonna be out there because they're talking about being up in the I'm like well it's showing a lot of wind and, and what's weird the news didn't show a lot of wind but my deal did uh -huh. and so oh, I got a fish Am I recording? Oh boy, showstopper. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, I was like, well, the wind will probably save us, but it probably won't be until but somewhere around noon. So with that fish, boys and girls, and with all the chatterbait biting going on, I'm gonna put an end to this show. Now I know this isn't the showstopper you guys are used to seeing, but we're gonna put an end to this show. The yeah, the showstopper, watch the top water video. Whee! Showstopper came early this morning. Anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, Real quick wrap up on legit stuff. I'd had some issues with hookups and all that. I don't think there's a big issue with the smaller hooks. Charles is getting working on a showstopper. But I do like the new carbon light. This rod and reel is it feels pretty good. I'll be honest, it's nowhere near what the zillion is as far as the reel, but I think it'll get the job done. Uh, I definitely like the feeling better of the rod when I had the zillion on it, but I don't know if I'm going to go through and then I'll just have this reel. What do I do with it and put a zillion on this, right? 
what's honestly disappointing is I feel my most expensive rod was the one which these are about the same price if you just buy just a rod but the rod from AliExpress has the least amount of filling compared to this rod and the 13 fishing fate black which is the cheapest one which is more sensitive even than this one by a little bit so it goes to show you to get what you pay for it not all the time uh, there's some nice little uh, rods out there that fit little certain things and for chatterbaits everybody other than i guess it but the tactical bass and boys they even talk about using longer rods nobody really talks about using short rods you do not have to have a super long rod for chatterbaits you do not have to have glass rods for chatterbaits you do not have to throw floor you can and they talk about oh well you can rip it do this and the hesitation but a lot of that you just got to get the right uh, rod that has just the right amount of flex and there's a lot of different ones out there you kind of got to check around but I call this rod as being one of the better ones I've found. That six foot nine, medium heavy. They call it uh, extra fast. That is not extra fast. I consider it a very good, almost a perfect chatterbait rod if you like shorter rods. Uh, you would probably want this same thing in a seven foot, seven three, if you you know you want and you like a lot longer rods. You're fishing on bigger bodies of water majority of the time. But this, I can get long casts, I can get into tight spots, I can, you know, do pretty much everything with it. So I like that rod. Uh, I'd still say right at this moment, my favorite one is probably still, and also because it's the most sensitive one, is that 13 Fishing Fate Black. I, I called it when I first felt this rod up at Rogers Sporting Goods. I like the real seat, six foot seven. They call it medium. I still think it's more right on the verge of being medium heavy. Maybe a light medium heavy, but it's perfect for uh, for me anyway for chatterbaits. Put that zillion on it. Game over with the zillion. But any reel will work really. Now I will say I do recommend I kind of rewatch and I've been you know everybody because I'll be honest. One of the reasons I buy the XGs and the you know XHs or whatever you know the highest speeds from the different companies is one real simple reason they the resale is higher for whatever reason people when they go to buy a used one will pay more money and they'll sell faster than the slower speed ratios they just do i think it's marketing hype everybody's talked about how fast and you got to catch up to the fish have you ever seen a bass really take off and you ever cranked in even these nine or ten to ones and you crank them you're not going to outrun a bass charging you your boat you're just not going to do it you can try to kind of keep line up to them but so anyway having said that this one is also i still recommend it i think the sharp they've got the powerful which is seven foot three i think the sharp i think this is the stiffest one i have out of this bunch i've been showing you and it's also for whatever reason a lot of you guys will say because of that two piece it's just a touch it's not as sensitive as the others but that being said that sometimes can be a benefit when it comes to that chatterbait bite people talk about you know you if you're too got it too much of a knee jerk reaction so I like them all three for chatterbaits. They all three feel a little different, but the minute I start throwing one, I feel like I get in that groove with it and it, it, it feels fine. What I had to, and I will, uh, Brett Height, you know, I will give hands down to him as far as how he says to set the hook is 100% true, but I've heard other people say it. And I heard a YouTuber, I can't think of his name right now. He explained it best. He had what was going on in my head and he said it and I'm like, you're 100% right because I, I had mentioned it a couple other times. You want to lean into that fish and you want to feel the weight of that fish with the chatterbait especially. It, it's almost with everything except possibly a jig. You might go with uh, Jared Swindle says that like slack line them, give them slack and then yank because the bigger the hook, you know, you want that little bit of slack to jerk and set that hook deep inside. Chatterbait, that blade, that thing's going down and if you just until you feel that weight and i think the biggest reason why you're leaning into them is it's pulling that if that blade's still down it's basically open that thing up getting that line tight to where when you yank all you're doing is getting that hook up in there you're not popping their mouth open or chance of popping their mouth open or basically creating a weed guard if, if that thing's fighting against the inside of their mouth as it's losing ground coming out of their mouth before it pops open let you know less chance of it hooking getting that hook in down and deep and that's why i think is the biggest thing that i started paying attention to and not just oh there's one or jerking straight up you kind of want a sideways pull right you don't want to pull straight up 
because that has more of a chance of lifting it up, you know, off the roof of their mouth kind of thing, is in my opinion. Right, Charles? Charles like, this dude talks a lot. So get out. Go bass bonsai. But whatever you do, make sure you have fun doing it. Stay tuned. If you didn't watch the Topwater video, watch it. Uh, we're probably actually done. We may throw a couple worms. We may not. Thanks for watching, guys. See ya. Yeah, that was a horribly long outro, Charles. You aren't making this? Making Georgia or making bacon? Sure. And you could throw it on, you know, put a... Especially you put on a floating plastic on a quarter ounce. Oh, Jesus. That thing... Yeah, and this morning I, I forgot that, that I That may them. be a showstopper, a new one. Because I've got something I'm wanting to try. I might just throw it just to see, just What's to that? see what it does. I bought some floating jig heads. Yeah, I think I've seen those. They look like a regular jig head, but they're made out of just like plastic instead of lead or something. Yeah, something. Well, they're usually pretty big, so if they trap more air. Whee! I believe I saw something like that before on tackle where I never seen them had them in person but of course I'm like why would you want that well I'll tell you what you put a zinker on it and then just throw and then just throw it around basically yeah I mean I guess I don't know that's what I got yeah it's like a freaking snake yeah, that tail just kicking. Yeah. Which you'd almost want just a solid black. You'd want them to see the zinkers. They wouldn't need to see the head. The head just lets it kind of help yeah, hold it up. Yeah, I can cast into the wind, so I think I ought to just leave it. Got one. You got a fish? Yeah. Charles caught a fish on his new invention. Been sitting here changing it around. I got I got one. I had one too, Charles. And it caught it on the front hook, not the back. <laughs> Went through all the, <laughs> yeah. Went through all that trouble to put like a trailer hook on this crazy thing. Show the camera. It's basically doing the zinkers deal, but then he's got this little weightless jig head thing. So yeah, it works. I guess it's just the security. Yeah. In case they don't hit it all the way. 